For this video, I'll be walking you through how to implement a heap tree in JavaScript and share with you everything you need to know about heap trees in general. Let's get to it. Let's start by understanding what is a heap data structure. If you work with JavaScript, you probably heard of JavaScript memory heap, or you probably heard of heap sort. Well, a binary heap is a data structure used in the heap sort, if that wasn't obvious enough. If you watch my priority queue video, you know a little about priority queues. So a heap is a highly efficient implementation of priority queue. In fact, people also refer to priority queues as heap. And this is because a heap can either be max or minimum. That means if it is a min heap, the root is the smallest value in the tree. And if it is max, the root is the maximum value in the tree. But the heap is not sorted. It does not mean that if the root is zero, the next value will be one and so forth. It just means that either min or max, the root value would be the value representing the tree. This makes heap data structure an ideal one for cases where you are constantly grabbing the min or the max value of the data. There are many flavors of heaps as there are with trees in general. In this video, I'll be using an array instead of a linked list to implement this tree, different from our previous tree videos implementations. I am also not going to get into a heap sort algorithm, but I'll show you how to implement both min and max heap. Just to start, I'll need some setup, which is something I've been doing for all tree implementation, which I'll copy over. First, the comparison frozen object containing the values for the comparison, then the default compare function that uses the comparison object, and all it does, it takes two values, compare them against each other, and return the correct comparison value. Now I'll create my min heap class with a private heap array and compare. In the constructor, I'll take an optional compare function, which by default will be our default compare function, and I'll just assign it to our private compare property. Next, I'll set a couple of getters, one for the size, another for is empty that uses the size getter. Then I'll set a peak method, just like a queue has, which will return the top, aka first item in the heap array, if not empty. For now, I'll create a print method that simply logs the heap array and proceed to create an instance of our heap and call the print method so we can see it. Because this uses an array to store the data, we need a way to know which nodes are the children of what node. On previous binary tree implementation, I used an object that had left and right node. The formula to get the left child of a node is by multiplying 2 to the node index and adding 1. For the right node, we add 2. To get a parent node, we subtract 1 from a node index and divide it by 2, and we don't care about the decimal part. I'll go ahead and implement these methods now. With that, let's add the insert method that takes a value, and I'll make sure it is not nil first. And in a heap, we always push the new value to the end. I'll return true or false, whether I push the item to the heap or not. After pushing the new value, what we need to do is sift the item up, pretty much move the item up the tree. The way we do that is by comparing it to its parent value. And for the min heap, the parent is always smaller than the node. So after insertion, I'll compare it to its parent value and swap their position if parent happens to be bigger. And I'll do that until its parent is no longer bigger or I reach the root. To implement that, I'll call a yet to create sift up method and pass it the last index of the heap, which is the index of our newly inserted value. Inside the sift up method, I'll get the parent index and use a while loop that loops while the index is greater than zero, meaning we are not at the root index. And I'll use the compare function to check the parent and current index value and looking if parent is bigger. If so, I'll swap them, which is going to be a method that takes two index to swap values. Then I'll set index to be the parent index and get a new parent index. The swap method is very simple, actually. I'll use an i and a j for index references, where i is the parent and j is the child. I'll store parent value in temp variable and set child value at parent index and set child value to be the temp. This is easy to follow, but with ES6, there is a different way which we just set an array equal to another, and inside we'll put the values to swap in opposite places. 
I'll use this way and leave the other way commented out just so it's easy to follow, but they are doing pretty much the same thing. Seems like I have two get left index methods here. One should be get right index instead. I'm also missing an X in parent index inside the sift up method as well. Now let's insert a couple values. I'll stick to numbers for simplicity, but you could put anything in here and pass a custom compare function to handle the comparison for cases like you want to compare a specific value in an object, for example. I am going to add values 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we see 2 is kept first. But when I insert 1, we see things shuffle a little, and 1 becomes the first item in the list. And this is what happened. As you can see, the tree is not sorted. It only guarantees that the first item is the value representing the tree, in this case, the minimum. Now, let's improve what gets printed so we have a better tree representation to follow since it is hard to see the parent-child relationship of nodes from an array. I'll add a print node private method that takes the index of the node, an optional space count default 0 we will use to indent things, a label default to star symbol to indicate from where it is started to print, for this it will always be the root. I'll call it inside the print method now with 0 for the root index. The first thing I do is check if I reach the end of the tree, the last index. If so, I'll just return. Otherwise, I'll console log a string where I first repeat the space, space count times, plus the label, and plus the value. I'll also add the index so it is easy to see where the node is. This is a recursive function, so I'll continue from the left by calling the print node again with the left child index, adding 3 for the space count and L for the label for left and do the same thing for the right side as well. Like that, we see the tree now looking like a tree and it's much easier to follow things now. For the final operation, let's remove things. And in a heap tree, removing is extracting. So we call it extract. And what extract does is always return the first item in the list, the value that represents the heap. And you can see now how this is a priority queue. If we were to have a queue that always gives us the lowest priority value, we use this min heap. And for a highest priority value, we use a max heap. If the tree is empty, I'll return null. And if it only contains one item, I'll return that item. And the way we get the first item is by shifting the array. Otherwise, I'll grab the remove node and return it. When we insert things, we add them to the end and then shift the value up from the last index. When we remove, we remove from the top, so we must sift down from the zero index. In sift down, I'll assign index to current index, so we differentiate it later. I'll also grab the left and the right index. So as long as left index is less than the size, meaning we did not reach the end of the list, and current index value is bigger than left index, we will update current index with left index. And we do the same thing for the right side as well. What this is doing is making sure that if the value at the first item is not the min, it will eventually be that. After we check if index change by checking if current and index are different, then I'll swap them and continue by calling sift down with the current index. I made a mistake here. It should say left index and right index. Now, when I call extract over and over, we see it gives me the smallest value. And the next smallest value takes the root place until the last value. For the max heap, we don't have to do almost anything. And we will use the power of class extension by extending min heap. And all I do is flip the comparison values. So in the constructor, I'll call super with a function that wraps the compare function. That will get the call with A and B values. Then I'll call the compare function with B and A instead. If I comment out this extract calls and instantiate the max heap, now we see that the max value is always the root. Again, when we extract, we always get the max value and the next max value takes the root place until no more values left. I'll leave the code for this implementation below. And for more content like this, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.